Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's a weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today, and it will be posted in our show archives later for you to watch at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show um, where you can access all of those show recordings. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do uh, spread the word, uh, share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on Encompass Live. Um, here at the Nebraska Library Commission, we are the state agency for libraries. Um, so we have shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries, uh, public, academic, K-12, correction, corrections, museums, archives, historical societies, on and on. Uh, really, our only criteria is that it's something to do with libraries. Um, something cool libraries are doing, something cool we think they could be doing. Um, we do book reviews, mini training sessions, um, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. We do bring in guest speakers sometimes to the show, and sometimes we have Nebraska Library Commission staff um, joining us, which is what we have today. Um, today, we are gonna be talking about Nebraska's Letters About Literature program. And with us this morning is uh, Tessa Timperley, who's our communications coordinator here at the Library Commission. Good morning, Tessa. And Sally Snyder, who is our coordinator of Children and Young Adult Library Services at the Commission, and also, a judge of the letters about literature. Good morning, Sally. Yeah. Um, and I think I will hand it over to you, Tessa, to start off telling us all about our uh, letters about literature program, right? Yeah, so welcome everybody. If you don't already know what letters about literature is, it is a statewide reading and writing um, contest that we hold for students through the Nebraska Center for the Book. They're the organization who sponsors the event and they also provide the scholarship prizes for the winners and they fund the um, luncheon that we have for the winners at the end of the contest. So they're the, they're our sponsors and they're who make um, it possible for us to do across the state of Nebraska. All right, so what is it? It is, like I said, for students in grades four through 12. And what we're asking for them to do is to read a book and then write a personal letter to that, the author of that book. It can be any author, they can be alive, dead, um, genre doesn't matter, nonfiction fiction. Um, we've had poetry, we've had just across the board, We've had fantasy novels. We've had a book about physics one year, which was a very interesting winning letter, but um, wow. okay. yeah, <laughs> so it, it really runs the gamut of what you're gonna see kids interested in reading and how it's going to affect them. So it starts every year from October 1st to December 31st is when the submission period is. And we break the letters down into three different categories so that we have students kind of competing against their own age group. We've got level one for grades four through six, level two for grades seven and eight, and then level three for grades nine through 12. And Sally, who has been helping judge for, Sally, do you remember when you started judging? I don't exactly remember, but it's been a number of years. We'll put it that way. <laughs> I think it's been it's been at least 10 plus years um, and she is a judge for our level one letters grades four through six each level has two judges that read all the letters that come in and evaluate them for what the judges are looking for and that's something we'll talk about a little bit later but the main question we're asking students to write about is how did an author's work change your view of the world or yourself. 
like kind of the main theme. Um, the Ned Brock Center for the Book. They are a collection of Nebraskans. They can be librarians, past librarians, teachers, publishers, booksellers, authors, illustrators. It kind of just anybody who is interested in the written word and celebrating Nebraska's rich literary history as well as contemporary authors are a part of this organization. Um, this competition originally started out of the Library of Congress and was a national competition. Mm -hmm. And then when it became, when the Library of Congress decided it was too much work for them to continue to do, we decided to keep doing it just within our state. So that's how it kind of came to be. And let's see. And there are other states that had did that as well, correct? Yeah, we're not the only one. Um, in the past, when it was still Library of Congress affiliated, we would have the internal Nebraska competition, and then the winning letters from Nebraska would go on to a national competition against letters from the other states. Mm -hmm. So we no longer have that second aspect of it where they go on to DC to be read. Although beforehand, all letters were submitted to the Library of Congress first. And they sort of weeded out the ones they thought met the criteria and the ones that didn't. Mm. So we really didn't have any control over the letters and what yeah. we saw in the end and what the judges got to see. They were kind of pre screened by the Library of Congress. Mm. So now that they come straight to us at the Library Commission and the Center for the Book, we get to see every letter submitted and our judges get to read all of them. They're not pre-screened anymore, which I kind so of- There's no them. longer a state, a national competition for this uh, a national program. It's just each state does its own. Exactly, yeah. <clears throat> we talked about this a little bit, um, but so after December 31st, when all the letters have been submitted, they are organized into their different levels, given to the judges to read. The judges read all the letters and then they evaluate them, um, usually individually, but Sally can talk about that a little bit more. Um, and then they come together and talk about their favorites, I think. But the winners are invited to a luncheon and a proclamation signing ceremony. Um, the signing ceremony is at the Capitol. And then we go to Bennett Martin Public Library, have um, usually like pastries and coffee and juice. The families of the and teachers of the letter winners are invited. They get to read their letters. And then we go down to the James Hope Getsky Heritage Room of Nebraska Authors, where they get their letters signed and put in the vault, essentially, as their first contribution as Nebraska Authors. <coughs> It That's really, awesome. I love that part. <laughs> yeah, it's always really interesting. Um, you know, we we have some we have winners from Lincoln, but across the state, and they don't usually realize this gem of a collection that we have at the Bennett Martin Public Library. With you know across the board, Nebraska authors of you know Willa Cather's first editions and her notes in them. Um, sketches by, um, who is it, Best Street or Aldrich, who, or Mari Sandos, who always sketched a little illustration kind of inside with her. For their own. Mm -hmm. um, letters, things like that. It's a great, a great collection. And we really encourage anybody in Nebraska to take a visit if they're here in Lincoln. But it's fun for these students to learn about the rich history that they're contributing to. And then they also get a scholarship prize or a cash prize for the winners and the alternates. Um, I'm going to jump ahead to assessment just so we can hear from Sally a little bit since she's been judging for so long. Um, Sally, what do you look for in a letter? 
Well, I'm looking for um, that, that they usually have a little introductory thing about I read this book with my uncle because he loved horses and we talked about that, for example. And then the story said this, and then they kind of get into either their relationship with their uncle and how that book affected that in a positive way, or it's something that they've talked about with their family and, and then this book kind of brought everything to fruition and kind of made them realize that, you know, people are just doing the best they can, for example, or whatever it is about the book that really affected them. Occasionally, there's, because I do, I'm in with the youngest group, the age of grades four to six, they sometimes fall back into book report mode and they miss that. How, how did this book affect you? There's nothing wrong with saying, this book is about, you know, something about the plot, uh, something happens and, and then this happened. But somewhere in there, we really are looking for how this affected their view of the world or their view of themselves and and a little bit about why, whatever they're willing to share, because I don't want anyone to share anything more than they're comfortable with. Along with that, um, we have, so should I go into why we have two judges? Because I see it down there. Yeah, definitely. I've had, um, I think it's three different other librarians I've worked with during the times I've been doing this. Uh, and we've all agreed that because we live in different cities, the best way to do it is we each get our letters and we read them and we kind of ju judge them by ourselves. And then we get together via telephone or via um, video like this, Zoom or something, and talk about our top choices and why. And it's not unusual that we've selected at least some of them the same. And then we have other ones that one of us thought, well, this was pretty good. And the, well, I thought this other one was pretty good. And we work out what it is about those letters that really um, captured our interest because of the, the goal of the program, which is for them to, again, talk about how the book affected their view of the world or their view of themselves. So there's, there's not, there hasn't been a bad letter in any of the batches I've read. There's no bad letter. Mm -hmm. Maybe the teachers don't send. But I was um, also, and I'm jumping all around. I hope that's okay. I've also talked with people about um, how the the submissions come to us. And maybe I'm jumping ahead and you don't want to talk about that right now. But I understand that lots of times it's teachers who have their class do this as an assignment. Um, it can be a public library. If they're having a writing program, they might say, well, one of the Letter writing is a lost art. Let's work on this and let's do this program for that. And also there are homeschool families and homeschool organizations. And this is a project that a number of homeschool groups or individuals have found for their students to do. And so even just one family can have that project and they can send their letter in without any other accompanying letters. That's what I understand. Is that right, Tessa? Yeah, um, it's open to anybody in Nebraska as long as they meet that criteria of, you know, being in those age groups. So we're not we're not looking for college level um, students, but yeah. So if you are anywhere in the fourth grade through the twelfth grade, that that's who can submit a letter. And we do ask um, that anybody who is under the age of 13 as of October 1st of this year that they do get a parent's permission before they submit a letter just because um, legally we're required to do that. But it's pretty easy. We just need you to check a box that you as a parent give their, your permission. And, um, and we do ask that all the contact information that is submitted is a an adult, either a teacher, a librarian, or a student, or um, teacher, a librarian, just an adult over 18, contact information. So we don't want student emails. Um, so yeah, with that in mind, we can kind of talk a little bit about how you submit a letter. Um, we have all the information available on the Nebraska Center for the Book 
website. And I'm going to hop over there really quick. So if you go to the Nebraska Center for the Book website and go to our programs tab, you can get to letters about literature. And we have all the information, including a big submission button that we hope you just can't miss and guidelines that you can um, look out, look at, pass out to students if you'd like to, or just use um, to keep track of, of what um, you're doing and make sure you're hitting all those marks. We do talk about contact information for us. We talk about um, the under 13 rule. We talk about what the judges are looking for. So we have a little rundown of some of the things that the judges are keeping an eye out for. I think our high school level, our ninth through 12th grade level three judges are a little more stringent as far as looking at grammar, um, things like that. There, We've got a college English professor as one of our um, high school level three judges and he he's very, um, I'm going to say picky about, you know, the letters he gets. He wants to see some really quality writing and that includes good grammar. But this information is all on the website for you. When you go to submit, it takes you to just a little submittable form. We do ask that all the letters are in PDF format and that they include the student's name and the school they attend. That just helps us keep track if a letter, you know, gets separated from its submission form that we can easily see, oh, this is John's letter and he goes to, you know, um, Lincoln Public Schools, or we can easily match that up with his submission um, form and make sure we have the correct contact information for him. So your letter is not just, hi, I'm from John, and then we don't know who it belongs to anymore. So we ask all the common questions. And if, if you are doing this as an individual, you can put your school information in. Um, if you're doing this homeschool or just for fun, you can put in any information that you feel you know matches that field. Um, if you want to put a parent's number or a librarian or public library's information in this field, that's totally fine too. Here's where we have our student's age requirement and um, the permission form. We've got, we like to know which grade you're falling into and specifically which grade you're in. We ask for, once again, teacher, but it could be a librarian, a parent guardian, um, any adult who is responsible for that kid and their contact information. So essentially, if this child letter win, who do you want us to contact? Let them know. Um, usually it's a teacher or a librarian, but it can be a parent as well if they're submitting that way. And then the last ones are super easy. What's the name of the author? And what's the title of the book you're writing about? And then a place where you can upload your letter. Like I said, we like it to be a PDF. And we want to have your first and last name, as well as the competition level in the file name. So, for example, John Smith, level three letter. And that just makes it really easy for us when we are, you know, collating all these letters and trying to get them to the right judges and matching up your letters with your submission form. But we tried to make it as simple and straightforward as possible in the past. When we were going through the Library of Congress, it was very complicated to submit a letter, or it felt very complicated. Yeah. And so we tried to really strip it down to what are the essentials we want to know, and I think we've done that. Sally, have you noticed a big difference between when we were doing it through the Library of Congress and when we were doing it ourselves? Yes, um, I have. The Library of Congress had more structure 
I, that doesn't sound nice, but they had so much structure with good reason. I'm not saying it was bad, but it was a little complicated to get to the letters. At Towards the end of the time they were doing it, they were all digital and you had to go to this certain website and have the right password to get in, which is all good and good to get to the letters. And now we get to just see the letter as it as it came in. Um, I don't I don't remember if you print them off and then give them to me. Somehow I ended up with an envelope with letters in it. That must be how it happened. <laughs> yeah. Um, they, we had a, a, set, a portion with the Library of Congress where everything was submitted digitally. Um, but then the judges only got access to the digital files as well. And a lot of our judges prefer having a physical letter in front of them that they can write notes on and that they can um, kind of like if you're grading a paper almost be able to assess them that way and something physical you can hold in your hands and underline your favorite parts and things like that. So I always, um, with the help of Bailey, our staff assistant, we collate everything. We make copies for each of the judges, and then we either mail or pass out an envelope with all their letters for their specific judging levels. It is nice to be able to write, or like you said, underline a certain part, because I read through the letters and I kind of stack them here and there. And then I go back and I read through them again, and I restack them here and there, because the first time through was just once. I try to read them at least twice because um, maybe I didn't quite catch what they were, what their point was. And so I read it again and that helps me, oh yeah, underline this part because that's where they really say what they're, they're feeling about this book. And then you try to compare them and comparing letters and comparing books, that's tough. But <laughs> you look, I, and we do still look for, we don't, for the first level, we have so far have not ever been, you know, marks off for improper spelling or marks off for bad punctuation because this is the first time for most of them to do this. And I don't want to discourage anybody. You didn't win because you used a period instead of a comma, or I wouldn't know when that was anyway. <laughs> it's not a grammar and punctuation competition. No, it's more about the content. It is. Yeah content and how it affected them mm -hmm. and how they express themselves but mm -hmm. we do have examples if you are a student if you're a teacher librarian or parent we have one that's right at the top which was one of our um, level one winners at one point I don't remember what year this is but they wrote a very short letter and um, so easy for us to post, but that's up there. We also have some past winners that went on to NET Radio's All About Books, and they read their letters live. So we have recordings of that. We've got um, in 2020 during the pandemic, we did an online awards ceremony, and all the students read their letters via Zoom, which we recorded. So we have a virtual awards where you can listen to the students read their letters and that was really fun just to hear that's my favorite part every year is hearing the students read their letters at the luncheon and they come to life a little bit more than just reading them on the page hearing you know their voices and where they put their emphasis and their emotion and things like that so i think that's a really great opportunity for you to see what like caliber of a winning letter kind of looks like across the board from level one to three. Um, we also have some great resources for teachers. Um, we will post, this is last year's, but after this session, we'll post this year's Encompass Live recording up here so you can see this. We'll all, we also have some reflective writing information for students because that's kind of the the key of what we're looking for you know book report where you're just 
telling us information about the book itself versus that aspect of reflective writing where you are digging into your own thoughts about the book, not just what you know the surface level of the book is and how your own world experiences or the experience of those around you um, deepened your understanding of the book or the book understanded deepened your understanding of those events. Um, let's see, we've got a little more information just about reflective writing and what that is and um, what students are kind of aiming for because we want to hear a kid's opinion we want to hear you know what they really dug into i have a, last year's winning letters here i just wanted to go over so let's see we had one from level three last year who wrote to amy tan about the joy luck club and they were a senior when they wrote but it's, let's see, they talk about, oh, just how they saw their relationship with their parents reflected in this book from an immigrant's point of view. Um, they talk about, you know, their, their parents' desire for them to get good grades and succeed in school which was very similar to um, some of Amy Tan's ex um, experiences in the book, which is you see a lot with um, immigrant parents, you know, wanting their students, their kids to fulfill that American dream and get all A's and go on to be, you know, doctors and lawyers and how that can really clash with maybe a, a student who wants to be an artist or a musician and things like that. So. Mm -hmm. Really digging deep into how that book changed their view of their parents and how their parents were raised in a different culture and a different um, setting and how that affected how they were being raised. <laughs> so things that, I mean, I, I can't even imagine thinking about as a high school student and having that be reiterated in such a beautiful letter to Amy Tan. Um, mm -hmm. We have one to Allison Britt on their book Obsessed. Um, and this really dug into some mental health aspects of the student about OCD and how they saw their own experience with their mental health struggles reflected in this book and how it opened their eyes that they weren't alone with those struggles. And so that was one of the winning in alternate levels last year. We had a book written to Neil Susterman, I never say his name right, um, about his book Five and looking at oh, let's see, how our government and its laws shape us as a society, which was really interesting and how this, this is a fantasy novel with a, I don't know if we'd call it just dystopian government, but a totally different government system and set of rules than what obviously we have in real life. So how that changed people's views of the world and you know the life they lived and how they viewed life and death. We've got a book to Robert Louis Stevenson um, about Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, which coming from an eighth grader, I thought was kind of fun and uh, not a book I would probably have chosen as an eighth grader, but um, and this one also dug a little bit into um, emotions and mental health and mm -hmm. you know those dualities of being a person and thinking one part of you has to be a perfectionist and perfect in school and in life. And then um, one side of you has all these deep and strong emotions that sometimes you can't control. 
So that was from an eighth grader. So we've got an ambulance going by. Um, one of our level ones, which was a winning or alternate level, uh, our alternative winner last year was a fourth grader, a 10 year old who wrote about um, George Takai's They Call This Enemy, which is about being sent to an internment camp. And I mean, just the way that opened his eyes to Japanese Americans and his heritage and what some of his family members may have experienced. Um, and just digging into history and how, let's see. How, you know, something that seems, he talked about how it sounded like a fantasy to him, like these aren't things that would, could never happen and realizing they did happen just the aspect of having an internment camp in the U.S. for U.S. citizens. Um, and then we had a 12th, or no, a sixth grader, so 12 year old writing to Essie hinting about the outsiders and about how their grandparents, one of them strongly resembled some of the characters in the outsiders just in how her grandfather was raised, I believe, and some of the things he experienced and how that opened her eyes to what his life would have been like at the same time that The Outsiders is set and how different that is from her life and her upbringing and how that helped her you know, understand his point of view and where he was coming from on certain things. So. Those are last year's winning letters. And like I said, they run the gamut of the types of books. You know, we had fantasy in there, we had historical fiction, um, some, some adventure. Um, I, I guess I would call the George Takai book more of a memoir or a biography. So just to give you kind of a hint about what the students were reading and writing about. Bella, did you have any thoughts about last year's letters or anything like that? Well, I was just thinking one of the things I like most about this program is that the kids choose the books. They're not told, everybody read this book and then write a letter to the author and then we'll see who wins the contest, which there's nothing wrong with that. But I love the fact that these are books that the kids have encountered and then however that happened, it could be from school, it could be from the public library or a friend or their family. And this book they picked because something significant related to their lives or who they are. And um, those ones from last year, we had a nice batch of letters and it's so great to have a number of letters to read through. And it, it was tough, but those two really were quite moving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Christy, you can let us know if you have any questions pop up as we're going. We're um, I do have a couple of questions. Yeah. Um, yeah. One about the, the letters themselves um, and the authors. You mentioned Amy Tan, who was actually here in, in Nebraska recently um, presenting, um, but I, I know some of the authors are alive and some are, are not. <laughs> um, but do um, do, the, the, do we ever reach out to the authors and let them know that these letters have been written? Like, do the authors are they involved at all in the program of like being you know sent you know like here's a letter that some um, child wrote about wrote to you about your book. Mm. You know, we don't, um, probably for the reason that a lot of authors can be difficult to contact in general. You know, if they're they're very famous or well known, they they do sort of guard that information on how you can get in contact with them, which I totally understand. Sure. Um, I'm sure they get a lot of fan mail too. <laughs> I mean, yeah. already. I do. I 
I would love to see that the aspect of that, you know, expand a little bit because they deserve to hear how their life mm-hmm. work has, you know, affected a 12 year old in the middle of Nebraska. Sure, um, sure. I think that would be great. I'm not sure how we make that happen since you're mm-hmm. right. Some of these, you know, Robert Louis Stevenson isn't accepting letters right now. No. So you just, you know, you never know yeah. who they're going to write to. Yeah, it's just kind of thing maybe like as, as it's being promoted whenever it's announced or something who the winners are tagging them on social media or something just at least to say, hey, this is the author that this person wrote about and yeah, and see who notices. Yeah. Um, and have um, now this program is, as you mentioned, if, as long as you're below 13 and below 13, like 12 is the is the max age for this program. Um, Generally, it kind of depends. Obviously, the. I mean, it's by age or by um, um, year in school? Grade level. Grade level, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, grade level. Not a huge range, but maybe a two, sometimes three year age range inside one grade, depending on. There can be, yeah. um, You know, when a student starts a grade, three would be stretching it, I think, but Mm you'd have to be. A very inside and outside those, yeah. <laughs> those age levels of when you can start kindergarten, mm-hmm. but so that we do we do make that exception if you are under the age of thirteen at, at the time the competition starts we just need to have a parent say yes you can submit this letter. Mm-hmm. So I think that's a federal rule that you right can't have anybody under the age of twelve submit something online without a parent's permission. On their own, right, right. So want to make sure um, we're following the law. Yeah. Um, Has there been any thoughts of doing this for the older teens, the ones over 12, like and having another um, level of it, like 12 to 18, you know, or whatever, to senior year in high school? Um, we do go, it does go to the senior year in high school. So level three encompasses ninth through 12th grade. Oh, great. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so the whole 13 is just having your parents' permission because you're the younger. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Um, if somebody were to decide to do this inside a classroom setting, um, we would never want, you know, a student to be left out because they were one of the younger kids in their class. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one way, so we could go over a little bit um, how adults are involved in this portion other than just giving us their contact information. Um, Mm -hmm. Sally talked a little bit about book choice and how that is really the student's prerogative. But a lot of times, this is something new they're doing, um, this reflective writing, not just a book report. Mm -hmm. But I think that's where teachers and librarians and parents really do come through to help them figure out what is a book I just liked to read and really enjoyed the story of. And what is a book that I really felt deeply affected me or opened my eyes to something? Um, mm-hmm. So maybe having a student come to you with a couple of different book options and being able to talk about, you know, what, why they liked each book and why they think they should write to each author and then helping guide them, you know, towards which book you feel really meets the criteria of that reflective writing and how it changed your perspective. Um, just like just like anything, um, you know, we all have books that we just love the story of and they we find them, you know, really engaging and fun to read or um, you know, they hit us emotionally, but maybe we don't have them open up our eyes to anything specific. And so really being able to parse out what are just the books you love and what are the books and the messages in those books that really meet the criteria of how did this change your perspective? How did this open your eyes to the world um, or to yourself? Kind of a thought. And the ways you can do that, um, some people have this as a classroom assignment. Some libraries have this as sort of a clinic and a fun, you have an after school group or 
um, like a homework group. I know some libraries have teen advisory boards or teen mm -hmm. uh, groups in their libraries who do a book club, things like that. This is a great experience for them to be able to take what they're reading and access it in a different way than just you know talking about it with their, their peers. So you can have letter writing clinics where you do help them uh, pick a book. You can also have help them with drafts of their letter, you know. Um, writing a letter in general is not something we do very often, especially now. And so getting to the root of what is a letter versus what is a book report or an essay is kind of a question. Um, going through it, helping them with their spelling if you need to, things like that. We know we'd never want an adult to write a letter for a student. But we would, we do encourage them, just like any other homework assignment, having that eye to, you know, this is a first draft, this is a second draft kind of a thing. We think that's acceptable. Um, having adults write their own letters and then comparing them maybe with a student just to see your own views, how those have changed and um how how a book has written how a book has changed your view of the world um, can be really great having mentors from local writing groups local authors um, poets things like that so those are all different options for homeschool groups classrooms librarians teen groups they could all be involved in that way yeah Uh, do you want to make your slides full screen again? Oh, yeah. Sorry, the sun came out. Yeah. Very bright right now. Oop. And you got to swap the display settings again. Yeah. There we go. Go to webinar. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, there's just um, a few <laughs> ideas of how libraries specifically can be involved, but this can go across the board to other groups as well. Cool. Any more questions? I know we're getting kind of to the end of our time. Sure, yeah. Um, we do a question about uh, judge the judging. Um, like, are you looking for judges? <laughs> um, can people, um, how do people, you know, if someone wants to be, Part of this is do you have to be a member of the uh, Center for the Book or um, if someone does want to help with the, the judging of these um, letters? Yeah. Um, is there a process for that? <laughs> I mean, our judges aren't all members of the Center for the Book. Some of them, some of them are, but not all of them. They are kind of a mixture of, like we have Sally who works for the commission. Um, we've got a uh, children's librarian like i said we have um, a college professor so it uh, we've had retired teachers in the past do it um mm -hmm. it just depends and there's no specific uh like criteria you know that you have to fit into this small little box to be a judge mm -hmm. but it usually is we only need a judge if somebody else has dropped out um, or decided they no longer want to be involved which which happens um sure. you you are committing sometimes to read upwards of 50 student letters <laughs> um and we understand that not everybody has time for that there we go it could be fun if that's you know seeing what the kids are talking about yeah and i i think the judges who do it they don't do it because we pay them. They're volunteer based. They do it because they really enjoy reading the letters. And um, I don't know, Sally, can you talk a little bit about why you're a judge? I, I'm well, I love books and I, I think that writing is very important. And when the 
the children have an opportunity to read something and reflect on how it affects them and writing, expressing themselves is pretty terrific. It's very fun to read the letters and and I can't run around the hallway and say, hey, you know what this kid wrote? Because I feel that it's, it's not for that purpose. It's not to share with people, except as a, as a winner or, a, or an alternate. I might be wrong about that, but I kind of feel like these are very private and I don't run up and down the hall showing them <laughs> off to other people. Um, but it's a wonderful experience to read through them and, and hear what kids are saying and, and what's prompted this comment or these comments from them and how they ended up with that book in the first place is always interesting that I ponder. I don't have any answer for that, but I just think, how did they run across this book from 25 years ago? And sometimes they have, and that's, sometimes that's the book they write about. And it's just a wonderful experience to read through them. And, and uh, oftentimes I've read the books, which helps me because um, I understand what they're talking about. So that helps because I've read a lot of children's and teen books, I guess. That's kind of my rambling answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fair. Um, and yeah, we never force a student to read their letter. Some of them are incredibly private or just incredibly personal. Mm -hmm. And so the winners, we never force them to read them out loud. Um, their choice if they want to do that. Their, yeah. yeah. And we also don't post their winning letters on the website. We say who they wrote to, but. Um, but yes, we don't always, we don't share their work unless they've given us express permission to do so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we, we want them to feel like they can, if they need to write about something, that they can, and that uh, that will be honored and respected and mm -hmm. not broadcast if they- Safe place. Be. Yeah. Safe place to express themselves, yeah. Yeah because it runs from talking about you know your grandparents and how they've seen the world to you know mental health um i know we've had somebody talk about eating disorders before um ocd self-harm just uh struggles with family members and bullying so we want to it to be a place where you know the things that affect you can be incredibly personal and private so we want them to feel like they can write about that but that it's not going to be shared if they don't want it to be mm -hmm. yeah i think that's good great yeah. all right does anybody else have any other questions i grabbed everything that i'd seen um, um so far my um, contact information yep yeah if you do want to know more if you are interested in being a judge to see if they do have any openings or need more information tessa's the person to read to contact yeah um the i realize i left out the nebraska.gov on my email address so ah. <laughs> that is important it's nebraska.gov not just nebraska.gov yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, the award ceremony and the proclamation signing always happens usually in the beginning of April because we like it to coincide with National Library Week. Mm -hmm. So we have a proclamation signing announcing National Library Week as well as honoring all the students. They get a certificate signed by the governor and they get to come to the Capitol come to the luncheon. It's a really fun activity. Uh, it's a great, I don't know if I would call it a reward for these students' hard work, but um, yeah. I think it's I think it's a reward, but maybe as a student you wouldn't see it that way. But you know it's fun parents, to come to the cap to Lincoln if you never haven't been here in a while or don't yeah. come regularly from around the state. Yeah. And and it's just a a time for the students to have their work 
highlighted and honored their teachers, parents, um, siblings, and then judges are invited as well. Congrats Center for the Book members have attended. And uh, yeah, so it's just a place for them to be, to highlight their work in that way. Cool. All right. Yeah, we are getting close to the top of the hour ish. Uh, I don't see any other questions people have been typed in while you were chatting. Um, so I think we might be able to wrap things up. Uh, the deadline is December 31st, correct? To submit your uh, students to get their letters in. Um, any last, last words, Sally or Tessa, that you want to share? I, think well, I just think it's a great program um, in that it en encompasses reading and what reading can do for a person and also a way for, for the kids who participate, a way for them to express themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think it's one of those things that isn't done very often anymore. Um, a lot of schoolwork and writing now is very straightforward about, you know, repeating information, trying to figure out what you've learned as far as, you know, what you think your teacher wants to hear. But this is a, really a place where we want them to dig deep and go beyond what will get them an A and go into right. more of what it really is to be a good writer and that you know the stories that affect us the most are, are usually stories that somebody's had to dig deep and mm -hmm. write from personal experience or just um yeah so that's that's the step yeah and it's the difference it's not a book report it's different yeah it's more than that yeah we really like to hammer that home yeah <laughs> <laughs> And you could start off with like maybe if you did write a book report for school, but then you're going to have to expand beyond the way beyond that for this particular program. Yeah. Yeah. So, like I said, if you have questions about um, the contest, about how you submit a letter, about anything, mm -hmm. you can contact us and please take a look at the library or the Nebraska Center for the Book Letters About Literature webpage. It has a lot of great resources and information and yeah we're always happy to answer questions and and help you in any way we can great well i am definitely glad that um i know that when um the library of congress first announced they were no longer going to be doing this program the national one there was quite a lot of um confusion concerns shock like uh oh what what do you mean we're not going to have this program anymore and i'm really glad that nebraska we decided nebraska center for the book decided to continue with it um because i know it was a very popular thing that was being done every year so um thank you so much all right i am going to pull presenter control back to my screen here there it is. We got thank yous coming in. Thank you, presenters. <laughs> um, and get things wrapped up here. All right. So thank you, Tessa and Sally, for coming on the show um, this morning and talking about the uh, um, letters for literature. I think we said it's a great program. Definitely get your kids, your um, the students uh, involved in it. Uh, we do have. I do have a link here from the show um, description that goes to the letters about literature webpage. So you got a link right there to all the information that you're going to need, and all the resources um, and everything um, that you could use on here. So, um, all right. So thank you everyone for attending. Um, the show is recorded, um, and as I said, it will be available in our show archives. If you go to our main Encompass Live page, um, we have our upcoming shows here, but right underneath is our link to our archives. And the most recent ones at the top of the page. So today's show will be there. Um, we'll have a link to the recording, this recording, which is on our Nebraska Library Commission's YouTube channel. And uh, to test the slides, you can send me your slides when you get a chance. Um, 
everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show, even if you weren't able to come live, you'll get an email from me letting you know when the recording is ready. Should be by uh, the end of the day tomorrow at the very latest, as long as GoToWebinar and YouTube cooperate with me. Um, we also will push it out onto our various social media. If you notice on some of our pages, we have a link. We have an, um, a Facebook page for Encompass Live. We post um, notices about shows. Here's a reminder to log in today's show. Um, and then here's the announcement of last week's recording when it was available, made available. So that we pushed out on here. Um, we have Twitter and Instagram that we use as well through the Library Commission accounts. And we use the hashtag, a little abbreviated hashtag, EncompLive for our show. So you can always look for that out there. Um, but I will, um, the email I send out goes out to our mailing list that we have here for Nebraska librarians, library staff. Um, while I'm here on the archive page, I'll show you there is a search feature. If you're wondering if we did a show on a particular topic, um, you can search for that. You can search the full show archives or just the most recent 12 months if you just want something very, very current. Um, that is because this is our full show archives and I'm not going to scroll all the way down because as you can see, it just keeps going and going. <laughs> um, these are all of our Encompass Live shows going back to when the show first premiered, which was January 2009. So we're 16 years old now. I believe. Um, so if you are watching an old, but all of our old shows are here, every show is here. Um, so if you do watch something old, please just pay attention to the original broadcast date. They all have a date there so you know when it first happened. Um, because uh, just be aware of when these shows actually went, were done live. Um, some of the information will be fine, stand the test of time, still be good, useful um, things for you can use, but some things will become old and outdated resources um links may be broken resources may have changed drastically not exist anymore some things uh people may work at a different institution than when they presented for us um so just be aware of that when you are watching any of our old shows uh, but uh, this is something that libraries do we keep things for historical purposes and as long as we have somewhere to host uh, all of our shows which right now is the library commission's youtube channel we will keep them all out there for you to watch and um, you want to. All right, so that wraps up for today's show. Uh, next week, it is the last Friday, last Friday, last Wednesday of the month, um, which means it is Pretty Sweet Tech Day. As you can see, you have Pretty Sweet Tech October 30th, November 27th. Um, that is when Amanda Sweet, who's our technology innovation librarian, always comes on the show to talk about something techie related. Um, Amanda has been in and out of the office lately, so I'm still waiting to see what her topic will be for next week, but um, she will be doing something. So just keep watch this space to see what she um, comes up with as a specific topic. But if you are your tech librarian um, or just inter interested in tech related things, um, sign up for that show next week. And you can see we've got our November dates, December even on here. And we're already into January where um, Sally will be joining us. Um, She's got her regular um, sessions scheduled here for um, summer reading program, best new children's books, so summer reading program for 2025, Color Our World, best new children's books 2024, and best new teen reads of 2024, talking about things that are published this current year. So um, sign up for any of those if you're interested in children's um, and teen um, programming. All right, so that's wraps up. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tessa. Thank you, Sally. Um, I hope we'll see all of you on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.